When installing a device on a network, it's important to secure access to the device so only an administrator will be able to access it and make changes. To do this, we'll need to perform some initial configuration settings. I'll click on PC1. I'll click on the Terminal Emulation Program. And now you can see that I have a console connection into the switch command line. I'll press enter and this takes me to the command line interface. As you can see, I'm logged into the switch in user exec mode. No password was required to access the command line. This is a security risk. If I type the enable command, you can see that I have now entered privilege exec mode, also without any type of authentication. This presents a great security risk since from privilege exec mode, I have access to configure the switch. The first thing you'll want to do is secure access to both the console connection and to privilege exec mode. First, I'll control access to the console connection. To do that, I'll get into global configuration mode with the config T command, and then I'll type in line console zero to enter line configuration mode. I can now put in a password for my console connection by typing the command password and a password of Cisco. For ease of this demonstration, I'm using simple passwords, but you'll want to use strong, complex passwords whenever possible. I'll type in the login command, which will require the password prior to entering user exec mode. Next, I'll secure access to privilege exec mode. To do this, I'll type exit to return to global configuration mode. Then I'll enter the command enable secret followed by the password class. The secret parameter that I used assures me that the password class will be encrypted in the configuration file. Let's see if our passwords have been set correctly. I'll do a control C to get to privilege exec mode and then I'll exit the switch. Now when I press enter, I should be prompted for a password before establishing a console connection, and it does. This password should be Cisco. As I type in the password for security purposes, you won't be able to see any characters. If I type it incorrectly, it should take me into user exec mode, and it does. And from here, I'll type enable, and you can see that now I'm prompted for another password. This time I'll type in class and press enter, and you can see now that I'm in privilege exec mode. Only those with a knowledge of the correct passwords will be able to configure this device. Let's take a look at our running configuration file up to this point. I'll do that by typing in the command show running config. You can see at the top of the running configuration file that the enable secret password has been hashed within the file. To see the rest of the configuration, I'll press the space bar on my keyboard and I'll go down towards the bottom where you can see the configuration for the console line. Here, it shows a password of Cisco and you can see it in plain text. We'll change this a little later. Now that I've secured access to the console port, I'll also want to secure virtual terminal access for remote logins. From global configuration mode, I'll type in the command line VTY and then how many lines I want to allow remote access to. The Cisco switch supports 16 simultaneous remote logins through virtual terminals. To configure all 16, I simply type in 0, a space, and 15, and press enter, and then I'll put in the command password Cisco, and then login. Let's take a look at these passwords in our running configuration file. I'll do a control C to get to privilege exec mode, and then I'll do a show run, which is short for show running config. I'll spacebar all the way down to the end, and you can see under the configuration for the console line is the VTY line configuration. The iOS automatically breaks this down into two groups, the first five lines, zero through four, followed by the next 10 lines, 5 through 15. As with the console password, you can see that the VTY line passwords are also seen in plain text. We can add greater security to the switch if we can encrypt these passwords so that they are obscured in the configuration file. To do this, I'll go back to global configuration mode, then I'll enter the command service password encryption. This command will put a light level of encryption on all passwords on the switch. To verify that password encryption has been set, I'll exit global configuration mode. 
and type show run to view the running configuration file. If I spacebar down to the end, you can now see that the console password as well as the VTY line password has been encrypted. Another important initial configuration command is setting a banner message. This is a message that will be presented to users when they log in and serves as a legal warning for any would-be hackers. To do this, I'll go to Global Configuration Mode, and then I'll type in the command Banner MOTD. That stands for Message of the Day. The message that I type will need to be framed between two delimiters or characters. Just make sure that whatever character you choose is not used within the body of your message. For instance, I'll use a pound sign for my delimiters, and then in between, I'll put in the message Authorized Access Only. Violators will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And then I'll end it with another pound sign. And now the banner is set. Now let's verify it. I'll do a control C and then type exit to leave the switch and then I'll press enter. Notice that I'm presented with the banner warning I just typed in as well as a request for a password just to get access to the console. I'll put in the password Cisco and press enter and now I'm in user exec mode and then I'll type the command enable and I'm asked for another password to reach privilege exec mode. I'll type in class and now I have full access to the switch.